if you could tell us a little bit about your journey and what got you into hospitality to start off with, that would be great. Uh, well, it was quite easy for me, really. Uh, I kind of woke up in a hotel when I was 10 days old. My parents uh, had hotels in Scotland, so um, I yeah, was kind of born into the hotel world and from a very, very young age, knew what I wanted to do, really. Uh, probably from a slightly illegal working age, was working in the back of the house, uh, but, you know, helping out my parents. And then, as I got a bit older, kind of, you know, moved to the front of house. Uh, but yeah, I was blessed, you know, from an early age, and knew what I wanted to do. You know, a lot of my friends now in their 40s, 50s still are a bit confused. So, um, it was good, yeah. And what was your first job in five-star hotels? Uh, when I was going to school, when I was going to university in Glasgow, I worked at a hotel called One Devonshire Gardens, which at the time Ken McCulloch owned. Uh, it was really beautiful property. Um, my parents, however, were given an allowance, so I didn't have to work, but I had a job anyway, which they then found out about six, in about six months' time, and I was sort of double dipping on finances, which didn't go down very well. Um, but that was really sort of a five-star boutique hotel. But I, like international-wise, uh, right after I graduated from uh, University of Glasgow, I went to Four Seasons Boston. It was my first kind of foray into sort of international luxury five star. Amazing. And when did you start with Rosewood? Uh, so I started with Rosewood about 11 years ago. So pre, so I opened this property about 10 years ago. Um, and prior to that, I was at Claridge's for about um, four years. And before that, Four Seasons for 10 years, but in New York and Boston. And then so yeah, so my journey with Rosewood over the past 10, year, 10, 11 years has been incredible. You know, I was sort of plucked out of Mayfair and brought over to Holborn. Um, I think people thought I was fired. I think people <laughs> actually think I got fired from class. It's so like, where are you going? What are you doing? And actually, when I, when I, I remember when I jumped into the taxi and came over here for the first interview, I really had no idea where I was going. I didn't really know where Holborn was of what was happening. <laughs> and then we were here already. We were here quite quickly. So, uh, and I was really taken in with the building, the architecture, uh, but you know, 11 years ago, not everyone knew what Rosewood was. The expansion plans that we have today weren't there, but um, uh, yeah, my CEO, and still is my CEO, just gave me this vision and it's coming true. So nice. here I am. I was about to say it's only five stops in the tube, but that would be the wrong thing to say. Like, it's it? three <laughs> from Bond Street. So. Oh, nice. But now, of course, I'm not here anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Which we'll get onto later. We will get onto that later. So diversity, inclusion, equality, big focuses for 2024. Obviously, um, I think a little round of applause we can have for Michael is being appointed to be managing director of the Chancery, which is opening, um, part of the Rosewood collection as well. You can clap. <laughs> um, I mean, £1.3 billion, I think, from the news reports. Rumoured to be. Is, is rumoured to be, the kind of, the kind of budget. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that, that's just a small property. Yeah. Um, is that anxiety inducing? It's like, how do we feel about that? I'm not sure. Um, when I told my husband that I was going to that property, uh, first question was, how many bedrooms does it have? 144. Uh, how many bedrooms does your current hotel have? 320. Is this a demotion? <laughs> <laughs> no, not a demotion. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a pretty incredible hotel. Um, it's, it's what was the old American embassy uh, on Grosvenor Square. Uh, which we're now turning into the next uh, Rosewood in London. So uh, opening at some point in 25. Excellent. Yeah. And from an LGBT perspective, yeah. in terms of diversity and inclusion, how are you building that in? What effect is it having? And how are you going to build that into the culture? Yeah. Yeah, that's always really important to me. I mean, I run a very open, inclusive workplace. I really, yeah, I think I've been very privileged when I was working and, and sort of uh, through my career, I always, I never felt at any point that I was being discriminated. It never really crossed my mind that that potentially might be happening to me at any point. But if I look back and sort of critique my career, I can't, I don't, I can't see a point that that may have happened. But I'm, I'm very, I'm very cautious, and I'm, I'm always thinking that, yeah, other people don't have that sort of benefit or that privilege or that background or that. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm always looking to, to see how we can um, project to others that we're a very inclusive environment. So through the new hotel, I'll be working with charities and partners, um, artists, um, creatives um, from the community, um, really weaving that through the story of the hotel will be really important. 
Um, here, you know, we've supported um, Attitude Awards, Attitude Lunches, uh, Wink when that magazine was here. We've been doing that for over the past 10 years, working with numerous charities. Um, it's really important. Yeah, it's really important, not just for our guests to sort of try and be a part of that, but also for our associates, you know. Um, the, the Attitude Lunch, the Attitude Award Lunch is here tomorrow. And, you know, I have so many staff members come up to me um, when I was here. Oh, it's so great we're doing that. It's, you know, really, people and allies as well, you know, who are, you know, not part of the community. They were, you know, oh, it's amazing that you're doing these here. And, you know, we feel so uh, proud that they're here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And do you think being an visible LGBT person, do you think that's assisted in attracting additional talent to Rosewood? Yeah, it's really been interesting. I've had, um, I went up to, I, I graduated in Glasgow, so I went up back up to the university last summer and spoke to two different classes. And I met some students afterwards, and some of them said to me, yeah, did you have any issues being gay in the workplace? And it was just never dawned on me that they were even thinking that. But, you know, it, um, and it kind of took me by surprise. And actually, when you look at the statistics, of people who are still closeted in the workplace. I mean, it's through the roof. Yeah. Especially like in other, you know, in, in other industries, it's through the roof. It's sort of, you know, it, it's sort of. Uh, I think uh, just like us did a survey not so long ago, and it was like 36% of people are still kind of closeted in the workplace, yeah. which is just kind of mind blowing. In this day and yeah. age, it's, it's horrendous. And in terms of like, you know, hospitality, there's lots of people in the room who work in HR, work in leadership roles. Mm -hmm. What policies, procedures, I know they're not the most sexy, exciting things, but not initiatives yeah. have you driven kind of like, you know, at Rosewood that you think have really resonated with, with the teams? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think with the partnerships and the charges and so forth, I think with um, uh, also I do a steering group where individuals from every department sort of speak with me and meet with me, all those sort of line staff positions come and speak with me. I think it's really important to hear from the, from the floor. I always have a very open door policy as well. So I, you know, I always have to promote this um, environment where people feel free very much come into my office and kind of close the door and have a chat. Um, and I always look at the diversity on the team as well. It's always so important to me. Um, and, and if we're not, and actually now building the new team, um, you know, I actually, a, a, it's not been announced yet, any of these positions, but it's quite a female heavy executive team, which has been great, actually. Um, and, but sometimes it's quite difficult to get the diversity. You actually have to go and try and <laughs> go out there and get some more diversity in, um, which we really try to do on this, on this occasion, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I mentioned before, it's 50,000 square meters. It, it, for those of you that don't know, it's the old American embassy, right. um, you know, which is an uh, incredibly iconic building. And you know, for me, Rosewood is one of my favorite hotels in London. It has been for the past 10 years. I think what you've done here is absolutely incredible. But it stood the, tents, the test of time. It's still current. It still feels new. Again, that anxiety inducing 1.3 billion pounds, it's like, you know, will be revisited. But when you're planning something like that, how do you kind of look at it and say, this is still going to be great in 20 years time? Where'd you get the inspiration to do that? From? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm employee number one still. Uh, so I've just hired my executive team. They're sort of coming on board in the next two, two months. Um, but yeah, I do feel the pressure right now because you are, yeah, you're, you're telling the story. You're the very beginning. Everything that we do and say will be the legacy of this building. And yes, there's a huge investment from the owners in this property. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of responsibility, but it's also incredibly fun. You know, the fact that, you know, the 500 of us that will be uh, in that building, working in that building can say, well, you know, we did this, we created this. Um, and there's 144 rooms and suites, probably the largest in town actually, on Grosvenor Square, uh, but then sort of 10 bars and restaurants as well. Um, and there's been quite a bit of press over the past few weeks about who they might be, um, which we haven't confirmed. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be a hotel, it's gonna be this really like kind of social cultural hub. Um, it's gonna be pretty incredible. And Grosvenor Square is getting the entire makeover as well. So um, it's not just the property. And actually, when you think about it, in Mayfair, we've been very Barclay Square focused recently with all the activity on Barclay Square and really nothing's much happened in Grosvenor Square. Um, so there's some really exciting things coming. But uh, um, yeah, that property is gonna really be sort of the last 
statement piece. And if you look at sort of North Audley and South Audley Street, so much has happened there recently in Mount Street. I mean, that, so we're kind of the missing component that needs to open now. So. Excellent. Yeah. And um, last question for me before we open up to the audience was really about kind of like, you know, when you're, well, second last question, to be honest, but, um, but when you're traveling, when you're, A, can you relax when you go to another five-star hotel? Ah. And secondly, like, you know, where do you go to where you still get blown away by the service? Okay. Uh, well, tomorrow I actually leave uh, for British Virgin Gorda and St. Bart's to Rosewood. Uh, I don't relax. Yeah. I, I know that sounds really ridiculous and you're probably rolling your eyes. But uh, yeah, if I go to a Rosewood, I don't particularly relax. If I go to another property, another hotel, another hotel brand, I don't really relax, to be very honest. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. There'll, there'll be times I go down for breakfast and I see the phone ringing, there's a queue, the host looks flustered. I'm like, we're going back to the room. We're ordering room service. I can't, this is all far too stressful for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm better in a house or a villa. Yeah, like with no one around me. It's really honest. You know who yeah. you are. You know who you are. Yeah. Um, so in terms of like LGBT figures that have inspired you, in terms of individuals either from sector or from the media that you really yeah. look up to or that you gain inspiration from, who would you say there is? Yeah, I think there's some individuals who are not probably in the hospitality, actually, who I just think are incredible what they do. I mean, a really good friend of mine is Alan Cumming, who is just, you know, he just sort of is an, an amazing actor, then an amazing artist, then you know, in philanthropy and everything that he does. I mean, everything he puts his hand on, you know, it just, it just is sort of is gold. Um, so he really inspires me a lot. It's just he just doesn't stop. Uh, but what he accomplishes is pretty amazing. Uh, and then Sonia, my CEO, I mean, she's like a year younger than me. She had five children. Everything she told me 11 years ago has come true and more so. I mean, the company doubles in size between the next three to five years. So we have like 30, 35 more Rosewoods coming. Uh, and they're being built or they're being refurbished right now. So, um, uh, and it's not just the hotel side of things. There's private members, clubbing, uh, private members clubs coming our way, another hotel brand coming our way, and there's a lot going on. But she kind of told me all this 11 years ago and it's come true. So Amazing. Uh, now, um, I know the community kind of like specifically in London um, feels pretty evolved. I think there's still some space to go, but what more do you think people can be doing and what, um, what associations should they be getting involved in? Yeah, I think, you know, one charity I love is Just Like Us, which kind of go into schools. So like I would go into the school, I would go into the classroom and say, hey, I'm a gay man. I look at my career, blah, blah, blah. Um, and sort of, you know, hopefully touch some you know, pull some strings and touch some hearts in that classroom about, it's fine, you know, everything's fine out there. You're gonna do well, you're gonna, be, you're gonna do good, you know. I think what they do is pretty incredible. So we started working with them last year here, um, and yeah, I would like to sort of more with them. Yeah. Excellent, that's fantastic. 